Hello, and welcome back to another action-packed episode of Comic Vantage. All right, so this week we have our weekly preview, or, or actually our monthly preview spotlight. This is where I go and I grab my previews books from my local retailer, and I show you what's coming up. And this is actually the books that are coming out for... Let's see, November of 2018, so we're looking two months out. If you don't know what previews are, these are the books that are put out by the Diamond Distributor, which is the company that supplies all the comic books to your local comic book store. And they put out the retail version for customers like us, so we can order directly from them, or we can tell our LCS to order them for us. So, let's get started. Um, Marvel and DC get their own little book, and then every other company gets one big one here. So... Let's start with DC. Now, it seems like November is going to be kind of a lackluster month for DC. Now, what I do is I go through and I, I just kind of preview the entire thing and I look through all the books and I just kind of tag what I think is going to be interesting for the month. And I got to say, uh, DC was a little tough, but this is I did find a few little gems here that I thought might be kind of interesting. Start with... American Carnage, number one. This actually looked really interesting. This is a new thrilling crime saga from the writer of Wild Storm, Michael Cray. So, it's a disgraced FBI agent. Richard Wright is offered a chance for redemption when his old mentor sends him undercover to infiltrate a white supremacist group. That just sounds really interesting. I'm kind of curious about that. I'll definitely be picking this up. And let's see, what else do we got? Oh, another new title, Electric Warriors number one. This one sounded kind of interesting as well. It's a brand new tale of a future DC universe set in a previously unexplored timeline, the Cosmic Dark Age. So, years after the Great Disaster, the Earth has started to rebuild and rejoin the Universe Coalition in order to prevent a galactic war. Different worlds throughout the known cosmos have created a new system of competitive combat. It sounds really cool. I actually have high hopes for that one. So what we got here, written by Steve Orlando, art and cover by Travel Foreman. All right, what else do we got for this month? Oh, and of course for this month, Injustice versus Masters of the Universe, number five. I just really dig this cover. I've been buying this series now as it comes out, so this is a no-brainer for me. And let's see, what else do we got here? Oh, here's another one. This is actually already on my pull. Scooby Apocalypse number 31. This is the return of Fred. Now, we all know Fred died, I believe, at issue 25 or 26. This is where he returns, but look at him. He is not human anymore. He is something else. So this should be really interesting. I am loving this series. If you have not read Scooby-Doo, I implore you, seriously, pick it up. Scooby Apocalypse. Grab an issue. It doesn't matter what it is. You are going to love it. All right, we have one more book in our DC section, and this is not a new title. This is Animal Man by Grant Morrison, and this is book one, 30th Anniversary Deluxe Edition. Animal Man was an absolutely amazing story. Everybody should, be, should have read this, and if you haven't, here is your chance to pick it up now. What do we got here? It is on sale 12 12. So, this is a December solicitation. It is going to be, I believe, a deluxe hardback. So, the price on it is $35, but it's 368 pages of Animal Man goodness. And what do we have? Uh, you get Animal Man 1 through 13 and Secret Origins number 39. All right. So, that was it for DC. Like I said, it was kind of lackluster. Um, I was really hard pressed to find books in DC for the month of November. On the other hand, Marvel for the month of November. Who boy, I had no issues picking out stuff for this month. First up, what do we got? Haha. <laughs> the return of Uncanny X-Men. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Uncanny X-Men, and they call it Disassembled, and it's the supersized first issue out for the month. Looks like our new team here. Bishop, Psylocke, Nightcrawler, Jean Grey, Storm, Jubilee, X-23, Beast, Cannonball, and Iceman. I don't know how I feel about Cannonball's costume there. It's a little weird. I don't think I like the whole bomber jacket thing. But hey, you know. And that also is going to lead us into Uncanny X-Men number two. 
And then number three, I don't know why these are all being solicited for the month of September. Maybe they'll be weekly, maybe it'll be bi-weekly. I don't know. And also, oh, we have some interior art shots for issue number one. Some gorgeous artwork going on. And we also get a graphic box with the same artwork from issue number one for this month. Okay, what else do we got? Oh, ho, ho. Marvel Knights 20th anniversary. Look at that. And this is bringing us into Marvel Knights 20th, issue number one of six. So this should be pretty cool. Oh, and this is actually brought to us also by Travel Foreman and Donny Cates. And we all know Donny Cates is rocking it. So 20 years ago, Marvel Knights changed the course of Marvel history. Now we're going to do it again. Really excited for this. So let's see. We also have, they're soliciting issue number one and issue number two for the month of September. So I believe that's going to be bi-weekly. see what else do we got in here gotta mention Avengers issue number 700. That's going to be a biggie for the month right there. Expect three billion variant covers. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Oh, see, it's actually Avengers number 10, but the legacy numbering is 700. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So far, only nine variants, which isn't bad so far, but you know, you're gonna have store exclusives and like dynamic forces and all of them. It's probably gonna end up being 20 variant covers if, yeah. So anyway, here's some of the variant covers. We have a George Perez right here. Beautiful George Perez variant cover coming out for that issue. We've also got an Alex Ross. Got to have an Alex Ross for a big book like this. All right, what else do we got? Oh, we got Ironheart number one for this month as well. Got Riri Williams. New suit is actually pretty cool. I like it. Oh, here's another good one that I was really excited about. The Web of Venom Carnage number one. Look at that. That, and this is another Donny Cates. Donny Cates is just sticking his fingers in everything Venom that he possibly can. So that should be really cool. All right, what else do we have? Oh, I tagged Iceman number three. And I'll show you here why, because everybody who is of a certain age right now will remember this. Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Look at that. Firestar, Spider-Man, Iceman. I just got goosebumps when I saw that cover. It's like, okay, I have to grab this. This is issue three of five. But look at that. I love this. Guest starring Spider-Man and Firestar. Iceman is on a blind date. Well, what's a superhero date without a mad villain to crash it? What's Iceman to do but call his amazing friends? <laughs> so that's so cool. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to pick that one up. And I also, this one kind of got me too. And this is The Return of Wolverine, number three of five. And look at that beautiful cover. Written by Charles Soule. But the cover is done by Steve McNiven. And his artwork lately is really, really, really reminiscent of Barry Windsor Smith, who to me is the quintessential artist for Wolverine. Apps, I love Barry Windsor Smith's Wolverine, and this is so much like his artwork. And he admits he's taking a lot of influence from Barry Windsor Smith right now. He loves being compared to him, which is kind of cool. This is just beautiful. I could not wait for this. All right, I believe that was it for Marvel. Yeah. Really cool cover on X-23 number six. Beautiful cover. That actually might get some heat just because of that cover. Look at that. And there's a variant cover to this by Terry Dodson, but they do not show it. Also, we have a really cool cover for X-Men Red number 10. Yeah, Marvel really has a better showing for September than DC does this month, that month, so. All right, now that Marvel and DC are done, let's get to the rest of the companies. This is everyone else. 
This is Image. This is Aftershock. This is IDW. This is everybody. This is First Comics. This is, you know, they're in here. Dark Horse. So, let's see what we got. Looks like Diamond sticks, or, you know, Diamond the company. They stick uh, Image up front because Image is the next biggest company after Marvel and DC, of course. So they get their own little area. All right. So first up, this one really got to me that I thought was kind of kind of cool. This is Bitter Root number one. And this is also Diamond's pick. They call it their gem of the month. In 1920s, the Harlem Renaissance is in full swing, and only the Sangier family can save New York and the world from the supernatural forces threatening to destroy humanity. And this is actually a, about a family of monster hunters. So this is really cool. I thought that was kind of a neat. And it takes place in 1920, so it will be kind of a period dated book. We've got some of the artwork over here. Sounded really cool. It looks really neat. The dialogue looks very, very interesting, along with some of the characters here. I do like they put this little preview right in it for some of the books that they spotlight. All right, and the next book, also from Image, that I was really interested in, Outer Darkness, number one. Again, this is also a pick of Diamond, the gem of the month. This is a sci-fi horror series from the co-creator of Chu. Mankind has colonized the galaxy, but during our interstellar travels, we discovered a terrifying secret out in the outer space, darkness of space. Join Captain Joshua Rigg and the crew of the starship Karen as they encounter demonic possessions, hauntings, and cosmic horror and more. Really cool. Seriously, sci-fi horror. Gotta love it. And not just like alien type of horror. We're talking like paranormal ghosts and demons and stuff like that. That sounds really cool. Very interesting. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> ah, yeah, this one sounded kind of cool. The Terrible Elizabeth Doom Against the Devils in Suits. This is a one-shot that is coming out in September. Elizabeth Doom is a strong, rebellious girl who is determined to make her way. Good thing, too, because her father long ago promised her to the devil, and he's come to claim what's his. <laughs> I really, really liked that premise. It's like, okay, I need to read this. It's a one-shot, so it can't hurt just to pick it up, check it out. I love one-shots. And usually if one-shots sell well, they, uh, you know, they'll you end up making an ongoing series out of them. All right, let's see what else we got for the month. The Warning, number one. It's actually a pretty cool cover. And this one, an enormous machine slowly materializes in a major West Coast city. Who sent it and why is a mystery understood only to the malevolent beings gliding silently towards the Earth through the inky vastness of space. That sounds cool. It looks like this one's going to have some tension to it. And they list this as a science fiction military action book. So, really, really excited for that one as well. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, I wanted to spotlight this. Crude Volume 1 Trade Paperback is coming out in September. If you have not read Crude, I'm sure you might have seen it in my reviews that I do. It's an absolutely amazing revenge story, and you should really pick it up. You know, it's going to be great to grab in a trade now if you haven't picked up the individual issues. I believe that was it for Image. And then we pop over to Dark Horse Comics. And Dark Horse Comics this month is bringing us Alien 3. That's right, Alien 3. Now everybody has seen Alien 3. They actually give some cool artwork over here. But this is supposed to be the Alien 3 you never saw. This is a... Uh, it's supposed to be an original, so not really an original storyline, but storyline based on the original script that was scrapped and then rewritten. So a lot of the characters will look the same. Some of the ideas will be the same, but everything is supposed to be slightly different. So that might be interesting to pick up and read. I'm kind of excited for that one. I'm a huge Alien fan. Oh, here we go. Next from Dark Horse, Dr. Horrible. I'm a huge, huge, huge Joss Whedon fan. When I saw this, I loved Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. And this is Dr. Horrible, best friends forever. <laughs> I'm really, really. Dr. Horrible is back, and he's brought his new best friend with him, Captain Hammer. The time stream has been breached, and who's, it, who's to blame? But the missus of time herself, Hourglass. 
So this should be a lot of fun. Dr. Horrible in general was a lot of fun. Joss Whedon is a great writer. I love all of his work. Now this actually caught my attention for the month as well. I saw Marvel and I saw some release dates for books of Spider-Man, Avengers, and Black Panther. And then I saw IDW. I'm like, what is this? And you flip the page and it turns out IDW is releasing a series of kid-friendly comic books based on Marvel characters. And Diamond has this listed as a gem of the month, so it might be kind of cool to pick this up. It sounds like it's going to be a neat story. The first book is going to be Spider-Man, and it's going to star Miles Morales and Peter Parker. And then, of course, after that, we have, that's going to be in November. Then there'll be Avengers in December and Black Panther in January. Those might be kind of interesting, especially to see a different company's take on these characters. I'm, I don't know what to make of it, but I'm kind of excited for some strange reason here. And, you know, this isn't the first collaboration we've seen between IDW and Marvel now, because IDW is putting out some kid-friendly books based on the Star Wars characters, so. All right, also from IDW this month, GoBots number one. Now, Transformers has been getting all of their props as of recently, and GoBots has been getting nothing. So, this should be cool to see. Also loved the GoBots back in the day. Not as much as Transformers, but still it was very cool to watch. I love the toys, so I'm excited for that one. Let's see. Also, from IDW this month, or in the month of September, we have Night Moves. And this is noir meets horror a small-time vegas hustler chris dundee finds himself tangled in a web of danger and the occult he's been on the wrong end of a pair of brass knuckles plenty of times but this time he might be dealing with the devil himself i love books like this you never know where they're going to go and they usually end up being a ton of fun so i'm excited for that one i believe that was it for idw and then we head off to boom and Boom brings us Firefly number one. Again, I said I'm a huge fan of Joss Whedon. Also a huge fan of Firefly. This was an absolutely amazing series. Cut short way too fast. Absolutely love it. I cannot wait to see. And we got so many different covers going on here. And they actually show some of the covers over here. And that's in Kevich cover right there of Mal. Just amazing. Also from Boom Studios this month, we have The Empty Man, number one. And this sounds like it's going to be a horror as well, brought to you by Cullen Bunn. And Cullen Bunn really knows horror. Look at this crazy, crazy cover. Ooh, I'm not even sure what's going on there, but wow. It says here, horror sensation Cullen Bunn returns to the world of Empty Man in his new ongoing series. The nation is in the grip of a terrible pandemic. The so-called empty man disease causes insanity and violence. Government quarantines are mandatory. One of the afflicted is Melissa Carey, and the next step should be a to be to quarantine her, but those who enter quarantine are never seen again, so her family won't let that happen. This should be kind of interesting. I'm really excited. They have some preview panels over here, so you can take a look. That one there is just, I don't even know, that's just amazing. It's kind of really trippy. I love it. Okay, and then we fast forward to Aftershock. And Aftershock brings us another Cullen Bunn story, Witch Hammer. The witch, the word conjures images of hags in black robes and crooked hats, standing over cauldrons of bubbling brew. But witches are among us, and we do not realize it. They are our friends, our neighbors, and they are our family members. They are our idols, and someone is murdering them. So this sounds really good. 64 pages, full color. It sounds like it's going to be a graphic novel, 20 bucks. So, But it's Cullen Bunn. It's horror. It is the featured item of the month. I would definitely grab that. Oh, and we also have the Walk Through Hell trade coming out this month. And this is the first five issues because it releases alongside issue six. 120 pages, full color, 15 bucks. If you have not read a Walk Through Hell, I would totally say grab this because, wow, it's a great story so far. 
All right, and then we have, oh, we come to Aspen Comics. And this one really got me here, No World. This is written by Scott Lobdell. I'm a huge fan of Scott Lobdell. And this is volume two of No World. I've never read the first one, so I might have to go back and grab that. And this is a Aspen's popular mashup of supernatural characters returns for a thrilling second volume. The stakes remain high for Thick and Docked Blue as they attempt to navigate a landscape that continues to shift following the threat of Pardner Bob. Now, I just, I'm a huge fan of Scott Lobdell, so I probably will grab this, and I'm probably going to have to grab the first one, though, just so I can understand what it is. But that's why I spotlight it, because just, you know, it's Scott Lobdell. I love his writing. Oh, and they're actually launching a New World Primer, 25 cents. And this actually gives you a lowdown on this book before you get started. I'm assuming in case you missed the first series. Oh, something else I wanted to show, and that's from Avatar Press. And this is that amazing book by Alan Moore, Writing for Comics, Volume 1. And this is a new printing of that book. So if you ever want to write for comics, I would highly suggest grabbing this. Or even if you're an artist who's into comic book arts and you want to draw, this is a great book for, somebody, for, for you as well. And uh, this was originally written in 1985 by Alan Moore. It still holds true today. And he's added some more information into it to kind of adapt it to modern audiences. So this is really, really cool. I'm excited for that. It's only six bucks. Oh, and next up from Roar, which is the Lion Forge. The Lion Forge is the company that's been bringing us Dino Saucers and... Uh, uh, Lion and Voltron. So those have been a little disappointing, but this sounds really interesting. And this is Quinn Credible. Invulnerability. And that's the only power he has. <laughs> so Quentin, a high school sophomore, is looking to live his best life by moonlighting as a superhero. The catch? His power is invulnerability. And that's the only power he has. Certainly no super strength, no super speed, no super flight. I mean, nothing. All he has is invulnerability. So that'd be kind of interesting to see what kind of character they create who only has invulnerability, if you think about it. I mean, really, what good is that? I don't, I don't know, but it's going to be kind of cool, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. All right, next, also from the Lion Forge slash Roar, is Water Snakes. Now, this just looked really, really creepy to me. And this is an ocean of dreams hidden from reality. The occult battle for freedom begins. I just, I saw this artwork it creeped me out. I loved it. And I was like, okay, I think I need to get this. Mila is a solitary teenager ready to put another boring summer vacation behind her until she meets Agnes, an adventurous girl who turns out to be a ghost. And not just a regular ghost, but one carrying the essence of an ancient fallen king and a mouth full of teeth that used to be his guardian warriors. So <laughs> that sounded really, really cool. And let's see. Oh, from Titan Comics, Diablo. I love Diablo. Diablo is absolutely an amazing video game. And I think, I don't, I have no expectations for this book, but wow, look at that. Now it says not the final cover art, but whoa, am I hoping, because that's just freaking amazing. Beautiful. So I will be grabbing that really just for the artwork alone, and hopefully the story is good to follow. And I only have one last book tagged. And that is from Valiant, and that is Bloodshot, Rising Spirit. Absolutely beautiful cover there. And this is a new ongoing series which discovers the true origin of Valiant's most unrelenting hero. Really cool. There's a lot, a lot of attention being uh, thrown uh, Bloodshot's way right now because I believe there's a movie coming out. Let's see, we have some variant covers over here. One by David Mack. Stas Johnson. And they have the pre-order bundle down here as well, where you can pre-order all eight to start with, and usually they come with an exclusive cover. All right, so these are the books that I have picked out for the month of September that I think are going to be good, that I wanted to spotlight. So, like I said, like I always say, these are my opinions. Your mileage may vary, but you know, I'll give you an idea of what's coming out. Really, really had a lot of fun with this. I'm loving this segment. I'm glad you guys are too. A lot of great reactions the last month when I did this for the first time. So I'm going to keep doing it every month. Look forward, look forward to my previous spotlight. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. 
If you're already a subscriber of mine, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely love you guys. You're amazing. Comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. Share, 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 share. Sharing is caring. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, hit that CV right there and hit that bell up there. Gives you all my notifications. Let me know when I have new stuff coming out. And uh, like always, guys, thank you for watching. And take it easy.